This is James Cock with Premier Martial Arts in Abilene. I have some short, simple, valuable information for everyone. Today is about falling and coming up correctly like a fighter. Gravity is for real. When you fall, you fall hard and you fall fast. So a lot of people will work on their martial arts training and they're really good at standing up and fighting. Or on the other side, they're really good at on the ground and fighting. But we tend to neglect what happens on the in-between. Either you falling and hitting the ground or coming up from the ground to get back to the fight or just get away safely. Here is a six-step process, a procedure that is proven and tried on how to fall and come back up to protect yourself. The six steps are going to work this way. First, we have a good judo break fall, which is minimizing the injury and protecting yourself as much as possible. So you never want to fall tall. You actually bend the knees and become shorter. Obviously, you're closer to ground that way. And then we want to become as rounded as possible. Falling with any edges or any hard part is going to injure you. So when we keep our chin on our chest, we curve the body somewhat crunched and we start bending the knees. This is important. Step number one is the judo back fall, where you're learning how to break your fall and protect yourself. Remember the hands are going to be right here and you find the timing. It's basically when the center of the back is going to touch the mat or the ground is when you spread the surface and you hit the ground as hard as you can with the heel of the palms. Sure that's going to hurt but definitely much better than a broken bone or a concussion, right? So when your chin is on your chest, the hands are up, you tuck, find the timing now, right here to break your fall. That's step number one. Number two is going to create as much space as possible. In step number two, I'm going to give you three quick ways of creating the space and getting the distance. If you can keep the attacker away from it, you know, unless they're projecting a weapon, then you're safe at the moment. The one which is a little more complicated, maybe, for a beginner is the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu shrimping hip lift, where we basically want to bring the feet close to our bottom so that our hips are affected by a higher lift and we get to one side. Imagine a fetal type position where we're protected. That is one way to create the space. The second one, which is very easy and practical, is basically a crab walk. So you imagine where we put weight on our palms and our heels, become compressed, and then just walk back, creating space. And the third one is where maybe you're just more flattened, flattened on your back, and you shoulder walk. You basically so those are three different ways to do uh, step number two, which is creating the space. Step number three is to protect. And it's important here that you want to keep a laser eye with your foot towards them wherever they go. So as we here, I have my top elbow and knee connected and ready to kick up. If they move, I move and switch. At this time, we're ready to decide, which is step number four, on what we're going to do. And really, you're going to sweep, pull guard, or up kick. Kicking up is my preference because you're able to keep them away. We'll go over the top leg has a really good effective front kick. Where you're driving your heel to their center line, lifting your hip up first, and kicking up. Step number two is very powerful and a good defensive stopper. Nice to the shin or even better to the knee. And this is where you're close again, lifting and driving the bottom foot here. Now this is going to get us to step number five, which is how to stand, kind of known as the technical stand. There are definitely a lot of wrong ways to stand, and what is most common? We would just kind of stand up like this, imagine the attacks that you're running into, so you're actually helping them hurt you. So the way that we would stand is bring our one foot close to our bottom, the other one hand opposite far, so this is my left and my right, and we're able to hip lift. As soon as we're able to hip lift, we're going to thread the needle. So I'm going to bring this leg with some power, meaning some speed and power. I'm going to throw this leg through. As soon as I throw this leg through, protecting myself here, then I'm able to stand in what is pretty much my fighting stance. To then, step number six, attack, or maybe run. That is the six steps of falling and coming up correctly. Now I want to show you some application with an actual person on how the six step process would work of falling and coming back up. And of course there's options. As well as just remember we could be talking about a variety of an attacker versus maybe a skilled fighter. So there's some differences in that. But what would make you fall? I mean you got punched, pushed, you slip and fall, or they have enough skill to take you down or trip you. You know and everyone today is some sort of a UFC fighter or fan. They've seen enough videos to know that it's very effective to take someone down. Not 
not to mention a football player or someone that's been athletic and they're just very good at tackling. So whatever would happen to make me fall, I'm already falling. I have to know how to <laughs> minimize the injury with the fall. Step number two is creating the space. And remember the three ways I showed you we could either shrimp, crab walk, or shoulder walk. But I've created enough space. Now the person's not going to give up. He's still engaging, but I need to keep him at bay. So I see my laser beam here, foot closer, and I'm ready to strike. If he wants to move in a direction, I would move. He moves the other way. My preference is to switch. So we have closest weapon to closest target. The next step is to decide what to do. So the up kicks were my preference, and we have a top leg or a bottom leg. So meaning top leg, since we're in this side, is a great front kick. As long as you lift your hips and time him on when and where to kick up. Also really like the bottom leg as I base and get my balance solid here to lift and drive through. This sets me up for step number five, which is how to posture and stand correctly the entire threading the needle to then step number six, attack, or decide to run and get out of there.